Now, funeral parlors say they want to engage with Home Affairs to sort out some of its challenges. The sector wants the department to speed up the issuing of death certificates and to allow recognized funeral associations to register certificates. Disgruntled funeral industry participants are expected to hand over their list of demands to the department's head office today. Well, let's chat this morning now to Johan Rousseau. He's from the uh, Funeral Industry Reformed Association. Johan, a very good morning, and thanks so much for your time. Please explain to us, uh, uh, as simply as possible, what the actual issue here is with Home Affairs. Well, good morning to you and your uh, viewers. Um, what the little bit of a background, we wrote um, as FIRA and the founding members there of the law to regulate the funeral industry to create the ombudsman. The documentation currently is with a law reform commission since 2016. Uh, we wanted to create a legislative platform that would enhance economic development and then also to protect uh, legitimate funeral parlors in the process and then to assist emerging markets to enter into the funeral industry. But I think we need to rectify that the responsibility lies with uh, COCTA, which has got no laws in place, um, which can't be enforced onto provinces and to municipalities. The problem that we have is because of the funeral industry being fragmented as it is, there is no licensing authority in the country uh, representing about 30,000 funeral parlors. Um, and then what happens is basically that Home Affairs is trying to play um, a mm. oversight role um, and have a responsibility over departments which is not necessarily in charge of the funeral industry. And that is the problem that we've got. And associations is merely playing a supporting role even though they've got no authority or regulatory authority to enforce these laws because it's not done by government. The problem that we have is that the funeral industry is divided within three sectors. You've got your licensed and legitimate funeral parlors. Mm. You've got the emerging markets, which is basically where the challenge arises. And then you've got your typical fly-by nights, which is just suitcase operators that want to make a quick buck. The problem that we foresee in this instance is that your emerging markets is now forced to utilize another funeral parlor because of the lack of funds. Mm -hmm. um, there is no support for the funeral industry um, whatsoever. Um, and we've seen that within COVID as well. Mm -hmm. Now, your, the problem that, that arises is that your emerging markets rents facilities from your licensed funeral operators, which then in return assist them with registration of deaths. Um, the emerging markets wish to register their own deaths, yeah. one, because it's a costly exercise. Um, if they have to acquire someone else to assist them, but it's also a fraudulent activity. The law specifically prescribes that each and every funeral parlor needs to have his or her own funeral facility, which mm. they don't have, mm. as a lack of funds but more so because there is no support for the funeral industry. And I think that's where the challenge lies. And uh, we must yeah. understand that there is political implications. Well, Johan, can, can I just jump in there and just ask about, I mean, as central to this issue seems to be this certificate of compliance, the COC. So just explain to us what Home Affairs has agreed to. I mean, there have been several meetings about this, or at least two that we know of. What did they say would happen and what hasn't happened to enable you to do your job? Well, the problem that we foresee is that the COC is the sole responsibility of uh, municipalities and the, uh, the Department of Health and Environmental Health. And it's not worthwhile the paper that it's written on because it doesn't comply to all the laws and it doesn't include all the laws. There's 12 laws that needs to be included in your bylaws, which is not done. It only refers to um, the Health Act 63 of 2013 and... Um, because COCTA, which is in the responsible party, does not have these laws in place, uh, incorporating all the laws, that creates the challenge and the mere fact that there is no licensing body or regulatory authority in South Africa, which has been opposed mm. by the very same people that's now driving this uh, so-called strike. Um, and that has, a, that has political implications because we believe that there's a hidden agenda in certain of these instances. The what do you think is the hidden agenda? I, I believe that there is a political, a hidden political agenda 
because uh, we know who is involved in which political parties is, is um, or political individuals or politicians is behind um, this uh, specific strike. Um, and uh, they've been seen on the same status as these people. So that needs to be rectified and needs to be known publicly because it also impacts onto financial services and to the uh, general public, not only onto those disgruntled mm. members within the funeral industry. But the saying that is that the COC, which has been referred to, is not within the jurisdiction of home affairs. So we don't know why do they um, mm. require that. And then also home affairs needs to take into consideration that there is a cooperative act. So we need to ask ourselves which law supersedes which law. And, and I think the problem that arises is that there's no proper cohesion between the departments. Mm. Um, each department is running his own affairs and it places the funeral industry under huge yeah. pressure because people are um, going and they're doing their training uh, to acquire these um, so-called um but Johan, just looking, just looking at at some reports and and what Home Affairs has had to say, saying that there was an agreement that undertakers will now be allowed to apply for their designation without having to produce a COC. Uh, also saying they agreed on the issue of a proxy, most uh, are unable to to be at their uh, at day to day businesses, there, so they will be able to use a proxy to appoint somewhere. And they also agreed that Home Affairs can operate on a uniform, so that what is happening in Home Affairs in Pretoria is the same as what is happening in Durban. So why is this issue? Uh, is this issue only being experienced in Gauteng? No, the issue has been um, experienced throughout the country. But the problem is, if we do not ask for a COC, then it's going to become like a cowboy business. Um, everyone can do just as they wish. There needs to be standards and controls which is not in place. And we need to ask ourselves, where is the implementation mm. there of our home of it? Well, while they're um, grappling with this, Johan, I would imagine that people who are losing family members, losing loved ones to COVID, are the ones who are suffering the most in this situation. So what is the solution here? Well, I think the solution was proposed to government and um, as far back as Malusi Gigawa and his predecessors uh, within Home Affairs by ourselves. I think the critical aspect is there needs to be a centralized licensing authority that ensures that a person complies to all the relevant laws and not only to a sector thereof. And I think that's what needs to be addressed. We need to have compliant funeral parlors in the country. And if that is not done, uh, you know, we're exposing ourselves in terms of COVID and many other diseases. Mm. Uh, because many of the funeral parlors do not comply. They do not have infrastructure, but they expect to be uh, seen mm. as a compliant licensed funeral parlor. So some yes, might ask you, Johan, some might ask you, why now? Why when, you know, we're at the lowest? Why sort of take this or, or, or take this kind of action or go on strike at the moment when, when the general public, they are the ones who need this to happen. Why put them in an even, you know, more dire situation? We must just make it abundantly clear that the FIDO is not part of this process. Mm. And many other associates, it's not. It's only a fragment yeah. of the funeral industry that supports the strike. Um, and the problem that we foresee here is that the general public um, are the ones that's going to be, um, you know, be affected, including licensed, legitimate funeral parlors, and then also financial services and insurance companies. So we must ask ourselves, what is the intention? Yes, we understand the frustration of emerging funeral parlors um, that they need to register deaths because without a death registration, they can't bury or cremate the loved ones of the public. But we need to ask Home Affairs what measures mm. do they have in place to fast track the All registration right. and the assistance of the funeral industry right. because that's a challenge. It doesn't help us to say to the funeral parlors out there that become a part of an association because in terms of the law, that's one of the mm. requirements which is currently not being done. Uh, because some of these funeral parlors operate under the radar, uh, being assisted by some funeral parlors, which is violating the law and assisting people to violate the law. Right. And I think that's issues that we need mm. to discuss. And that's the issues that we presented to government, uh, to Home Affairs, to Solga, to Kokta. Um, and we've been doing that over the past 20 years. The concern that we've got here is that the very same people now that's driving this so-called looming strike, which is affecting business, which is affecting service delivery, which is affecting everyone within the country, um, needs to ask themselves, why did they oppose their regulation mm. with a growth 
aspect with a transformation development aspect uh, linked to it. And I okay. think that's where we need to start right. because it is a huge, huge problem within South Africa. And we can't really blame home affairs okay. in terms of what they're doing because home affairs was influenced by certain stakeholders to amend the laws without consultation. Right. And that deemed unconstitutional. Okay. You have only... We'll have to leave it there. We'll have to leave it there. Thanks very much. Johan Rousseau from the Funeral Industry Reformed Association. We will be uh, chatting to Home Affairs uh, after 10 o'clock as well to get their take on uh, this particular issue.